Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I'm Denise Mazzola. Today we are with Sadie, who is a 10-year-old golden retriever, and Tessa, a four-and-a-half-month-old golden retriever, and Marsha. And they have some terrible jumping problems, which yeah. <laughs> we're not seeing right now. <laughs> so um, tell me what else is going on. Well, um, she's been jumping for a long time. Um, ten she's years? Ten, ten, ten years, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and people come to the house and she acts like she's been in a closet for, you know, <laughs> ten years. And she's jumping and jumping and crying and carrying on. And mm -hmm. it's just hard to have a conversation and it's hard to get her settled down. Okay. Um, and now with Tessa, she's kind of following her lead. Mm -hmm. And um, we're... It's it's Christmas time. I don't. And, yeah, uh, we we're gonna have a bunch of people over, and we hate to have them locked up in in the room. We'd like right. them to, you know, participate. Okay. In some way, but but to be calm, to be like this. Yeah, this is um, great. Just have me over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look, they'll be That's, perfect. Yeah, they'll be perfect. <laughs> But it's sometimes it's it's almost embarrass it's embarrassing and especially sure. if an elderly person comes they go with their claws and they're they're clawing them they're whining they're they're crying she she's very vocal and she barks mm -hmm. a lot okay so Funny it's it's quite a scene when somebody comes okay and I'd like it I mean I like their exuberance but I'd like them to be a little calmer, like they feel like sometimes they're really out of control. Okay. All right, so um, before we sort of see it in action, what have you tried anything? What's worked, what's not worked? Or what's helped or not helped? She, with her... Um, her who? Oh, Sadie. Sadie. With okay. Sadie, um, I have tried, um, you know, just kind of like turning around or, or doing like the knee, a little bit of the knee. Okay. Um, when Sometimes, she's jumping on you. Yeah, when she's jumping on me. So she'll jump on you when you come home? She'll, yeah. Like, she'll push herself on me and, okay. and, and steal shoes and run away and cry and the whole thing. Okay. Um, what does work is food, and I, I don't always think to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, she really likes cat food, and she likes hot dogs, mm -hmm. too. Um, they will sit, like I'll tell them, mm -hmm. sit, and they'll sit. Okay. But I've never tried that with someone else, and I really don't know how to guide like guests that come in. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes they'll just come in the door, so I'm not prepared, okay. and they're jumping and clawing. And you know, one of my friends like she she kind of ripped her sweater, and it's it's a scene. Okay, so it's harder with two, and it's harder when people come in and you don't expect them to come in. Right. Obviously, right. Um, she's been doing this for 10 years. It's not that we can't teach an old dog new tricks, <laughs> but for her, the value of jumping is way high, like way up here. Yeah. And the value of doing anything else is down here on the floor. Mm -hmm. And the trick is to switch those. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to take 10 years. She's probably pretty food motivated. She doesn't have 10 more years to, to figure all that out. <laughs> so let's see... Um, let's see this in action. Okay. If we can and have your daughter come downstairs so we can see that because they've acclimated to me now and they're not being. Yeah, they're not. not they'll they're calm not being down. naughty doggies. Okay. And then let's talk about some more about what we can do. Okay. So I'll call my daughter and her friend is over and. Yep. You'll see what they do. Yeah. <laughs> see it and hear it. I okay. Hear this whining thing that goes on. All right. Okay. Let me call them. Ooh, sure. Head's hot from the bean in front of the stove. People. <laughs> of course, they're not going to do it. Good. Well, come over here. Where? See it over here. Hi, Tessa. Oh. 
Now it's about the bone. Was that the was that the wine you were talking about? Yeah, but it's usually worse than this. <laughs> of it's course really it is. It's really bad. Isn't it, Emily? It's like yeah. like they're they're being really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Emily, let's just have you walk out and then come back in again. Let's right. just see if they do anything. Let's have you well, both go out. Let me get rid of the bone because I think the bone is like not. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Look, it's fixed. Okay, well, <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> all right. We were thanks, in the Lily. Kitchen. They were all over. Yeah. <laughs> really and truly, they're crazy. All right, thanks, yeah. ladies. <laughs> we promise. They're so crazy this morning that maybe that. Well, we know they are, but. <laughs> all right, what can we do to. Oh my God, that's very funny. That is funny. All right, so we all we all can visualize what it, what it looks like, <laughs> and the clawing and the sweaters and all that sort of stuff. Come on, Tessa, 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 come. Hi, hi. Oh, I know that seems to get you going. Oh, yeah, yeah like oh, this. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So there's several there's several things that has to happen. First, it has to be worth their while to play the training game of yeah. sit, stand, or lay down when people come over. Mm -hmm. It just has to be, or they won't do it. It'll, and and the history is it's more worth their while to jump all over people. They get a reaction from you, yeah. which is just whether you're talking to them or trying to grab them or yeah, whatever, clapping yeah. your hands or whatever it is, right. right? That's all attention from the dog's perspective. Yeah. And um, and then your friend is friends or family are doing something that's probably not very helpful, whatever that is. Yeah, they're is. like, oh, oh, stop, stop, and, right. you know, just... <laughs> right, that's really effective. And looking at me like, control these dogs, please. Right. Um, so, there's a couple of options. Let me just run through them. So, you could put them in another room while your guests initially enter, because yeah. it's that initially coming into the house. If you were to come into my house... Festa would bark. Thor would probably bark. He's too old to jump anymore. But you know, you're gonna you're gonna have this energy burst. Yeah. So you can put them in a room. You can give them each a separate bone or something to chew on. Get the guests in. Let everybody settle down. Sit down. You know, 15, 20 minutes or so, mm -hmm. and then let them out. Mm -hmm. And it it's just gonna be a little bit of an experiment. Like you might have to call and say, well, that didn't work because as soon as they came out there, Meh! which yeah. they might be, they yeah. might be. Um. So that was that's one idea. The other one is one at a time, like especially her. I would concentrate more on Tessa and I would leash her when people come over mm -hmm. so that she just can't jump on them. Yeah. So you will be um, you'll either stand on the leash, you can hold the leash, but there's one thing about jumping and that is you cannot control your family and friends. Hang on, I think I have a How's that sounding? Sit. Sit. So, because you can't control your family and friends, then you have to you have to control the dogs, right? Because some people will come over and say, "Oh, it's okay. I'm wearing my jeans. Yeah, they can jump on me." Right. And then right. the next time they come over, you know, they have a sore leg or they're wearing their best pants that they just bought, and they happen to be black, so they don't want any dog hair on them. So I would step on the leash this way. Mm -hmm. It's attached to her collar. She can stand, sit, or lie down. But if someone, if she starts to get excited, she's just going to hit the end of the leash. Yeah. Okay? So the number one thing is prevent the jumping from happening. Mm hmm H However you need to do that. So I should keep her in a room If somewhere? you really want it to go away, yes. Yeah. Because okay. you can't teach a new behavior while the old one is still occurring. Mm hmm Okay? Now, does she have a sit or a lay down? Yes, she does. Tessa, sit. Good girl. Oh, a chewer. <laughs> Most she, dogs chew, she doesn't <laughs> swallow. Yeah. Doesn't, oh, do you want something too? <laughs> oh, she's still chewing it. <laughs> so this is what you're saying. Yes, this is what that. Is. So does she have a shake or a paw? She does. Okay. So this is some sort of ramification of yes, that. Yes, it is. And one thing that you all should practice doing as much as possible is ignoring that. Does she do it to you guys, the family? Um, she won't do it to me because I right away I'm like I push her away. Okay. And other like your other kids, does 
your husband? Does she like Emily? Will when she comes home from school because she's in college, she'll mm -hmm. be like, ah, stop, stop, you know, and she probably likes that reaction, like, oh, go away, like right. all the dogs are right. attacking her. She's, you know, like right, screaming and laughing and right, <laughs> and screaming can sound like a squeaky toy. <laughs> Right, and be yeah. a little more reinforcing than yeah. we intended to be. Right. Oh, that one, that one went right down. Okay. So this is how I would hand, I mean, you could do the same thing with her. I, I just wouldn't do them at the same time. Oh, Want, somebody yeah. has to be trained first. Yeah. And I, I would train her first because she's still learning, mm -hmm. um, and then work on her. Mm -hmm. Good girl. Look at you lying know, down. She is good. Um, okay, so... As much as possible, this hanging on you stuff should be ignored. Yeah. Or I would suggest you kind of walk right into her. And are you familiar with body blocking? No. Do you know what that is? Okay. So body blocking is something that, and you will probably, I've seen um, Sadie do it a little bit to Tessa around the bone and stuff. They, you, the dogs will actually block another dog's path mm. to prevent them from going like towards you or... Um, any, anything and we can sort of we can communicate in the same way to the dog mm -hmm. using body blocking so don't pat her because okay. you're going to reinforce oh. pawing at you i'd actually stand up and walk into her just a little bit yep mm -hmm. and now sit back down okay so get some exercise doing this huh. so i just want her paw when i say shaky paw and not that's the only time you yeah. want it that's the only time so she went away she did because that hmm. body blocking can be very effective. <laughs> wow. Hmm. So if you take her paw off and then you pat her head, you reinforce pawing. Yeah. She did get yeah. something from that. Right. And with Goldens, it doesn't always have to be food. We all know they're attention hogs yeah, just as they well. Are. Okay, Sadie, come on. Or Tessa, get up. So body blocking is just stepping into her space so she backs up. See how she backs up? Good mm -hmm. girl. She can make the choice to sit down. Back up. But you want her. You want them to yield to your space. There you go. Good girl. It's there's a lot of pressure on the dog when you body block. Mm -hmm. It's like having that person that stands too close to you, and you yeah. just want to back up. Yeah. And if they take a step into you, then you need to back up again. Like that. That feels like pressure, right? Like yeah. it's a like you can physically feel it. Right. So when you block her, see how she took like three steps back. Mm -hmm. I don't need to keep moving forward. Once she stops. Correct. Once, Once she, she starts. So watch again. Come here, Tessa. Or, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she says, I'm not going to. So if I block her, it's harder when she sits. Come here. Let's get you up. So there she takes three. See how she took two steps? Yeah. But I didn't have to go. I didn't have to continue to oh, move uh -huh. her. So you don't be the close talker that keeps stepping into her like this. Right. That's just a lot of pressure, and I'm never saying thank you by taking the pressure off oh, of her. I see. Okay. Uh huh. So, body blocking is something that you can do. Again, <laughs> you can't control your family and friends. Yeah. I have never had luck saying, "Oh, sure." You know, having my brother come in. Can you um? Can you come in and body block all the dogs? And be like, "What? No." You know, I mean, they don't yeah, understand it, yeah. and and then they're going to pat them and mm -hmm. do all sorts of other things. So it's something that the family could certainly do, mm -hmm. because if she if they start to learn here, not to jump on you, not to jump on Brian, Emily, everybody else, mm -hmm. then then it will start. Then you'll have a a little you'll have a better opportunity for, to get them to do not do it with other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, good girl, Sadie. She's <laughs> <laughs> gonna groan. <laughs> All right. Now, for Tessa, what would you like her to do instead of jump on people? I'd like, um, I don't know, I'd like her to sit. I mean, you have to have some, she has to be, you have to be clear about what you want her to do, or you won't be successful in getting her to stop jumping. Um, I guess to sit. Okay, so to sit when people come in? Like, what's, what's the optimal, like, what, what's... Whatever you want to reinforce. Yeah. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't mind them greeting people, but I don't want them jumping on them and clawing them. and, and Right. So that ambiguity is going to be a recipe for a disaster. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I understand what you're saying. You just, you, they can do anything except for jump on people. Right. But dogs need much clearer directions than that. Uh-huh. Because they're just going to divert to what they're good at, which is jumping on them. Right. 
Right. And hang. They don't just jump. They sort of hang. Yeah, they and do. Little toenails kind of get into your yeah, sweater. Yeah. And, oh, look, I'll lay here and smell your back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're a bad doggy at all. No. no I don't. Look at you. Look at you. You're very funny. All right. <laughs> I would, I think that sitting is, it, Sitting is fairly easy. You don't have you don't have to bend over. The, you know they can just sit next to you. So let's try yeah. that, Tessa. Come here. Come here. So I would I would just naturally put her on my left side, but you can have her anywhere you want. Come here. Well, we're gonna get everybody sit. So you do a lot of um, sitting in front of you. Mm -hmm. They sit in front of you for a lot of their stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which we can do it that way. But I'd kind of like them to see the people that are coming in. Sit. Sit. So the first thing is she's going to need to learn that she can sit somewhere else besides in front of you. Uh-huh. Right? So she can sit next to you. I know, Sadie. It's terrible. And then as people come in, so Sadie's going to be out of the picture, and you're just going to work with Tessa to start with. And you can alternate. Then... Tessa goes in her crate, and you work with Sadie. Mm -hmm. So as the people are coming in, you're going to have to have a handful of food in your pocket. You can buy a bait bag. You can um, get like a like a carpenter's little thing sometimes. Yeah. So I'm going to body blocker. And the whole time she's sitting next to you, you're going to feed her while people are coming in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> going to dance with you. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. So that the payment will come for sitting. They won't be allowed to do the jumping. I know. It's hard when you're 10. And it will be more worth their while. Oh, sit on Marcia's, you know, whichever side you want. Uh-huh. You, they can certainly sit there. It just seems like they ought to see the person coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, so if they were sitting next to you looking out, you could feed them like that. They could see the person so that they're not surprised or they keep turning mm -hmm. around and trying to mm -hmm. grab at them. Go on, get off. <laughs> sit. Good girl. All right, one for you. <laughs> Good job. And that will take time. Yeah. And what you may also start to see is a is a partial jump and then a self correction where they go, Oh, like like maybe they jump in the air and they're they're not jumping on the people anymore. Yeah. So that would be a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But but honest to goodness, I can't I always sound like a broken record, but you need to stop it from happening. It just it has to stop. Yeah. Before yeah. you can teach them anything. They can't practice randomly jumping on people when they come in while you're oh, well this time I'm gonna be prepared. Right. You know, so maybe you put a note on your door, please knock or yeah. please let me know you're coming in. I mean, how mm -hmm. often are people in and out without warning? Um, well, with when Emily's home and, you know, my son, well, I have a teenage son and then Emily's 21, it, people just come in and out. and Right. So now it's going to be a little bit more while she's home from college. Right. You'll have people. Right. Okay. Um, well, there's no real good way to gate off anything either so that... They couldn't have access to that door. Mm. Is there a I have, door? I have, I have it partially. They could come in the front door because with her, I don't usually gate the house because she has full reign. Right. But and that's another question I wanted to okay. ask you about um, house training. Okay. But I usually have this gated off, and they're just like either here or just in the kitchen. So maybe they can just they can come in through the front door rather will they than the side will they, door. Will they change their behavior and do that? My, I could ask them yeah. to do that. I would lock your back door. Yeah. Because it's going to be very hard to get them to change their behavior. Right. People, people, <laughs> we do not change our behavior quickly. Even if I give them treats? Well, <laughs> you say every I'll time you come in the front door, Christmas I'm going to give cookies. you $5 or something. Yeah, they'll probably come in the, yeah. the front door. But I just know because I had a, I've had a couple of dogs in the house, and I didn't want Olivia coming in the back door because they were downstairs loose, and they were barking, and they are a little afraid. I didn't want them to get bit. So I would text her. I said, please come in the front door. And then I'd hear them downstairs. I said, did you get that text? Oh, yeah, right. Come in the front door. But see, it's not a, it's not yeah. a thought. There's no thought to what door you enter the house. It's just automatic. Right. Automatic. Right. Automatic. Yeah, so that's true. I'm yeah. just saying the chances of getting people to come in the front door aren't going to be very good. No. 
So you could put a note on or the family could be educated to just keep walking and completely ignore them. Yeah. You can certainly use extinction. Yeah. But they just yeah. have to be, whatever you're going to do has to be 100% consistency and they'll get it fast. Hmm. It's the humanness, the, our humanness that's very variable. Well, today, I don't feel like doing it today. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Hi, yeah. Sadie. Okay, get down. Right. And then right. the next day it's like, well, no, I don't want you to jump on me. Mm -hmm. And then we get really strict with it. And the dog's like, so when I come in the door, I come in the door and it's just like this, it's, it's this mayhem. huddle. Yeah, it's mayhem. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I, you know, I, I turn around, I, I go like this and, you know, I keep walking. I, I'm almost tripping over them and they're just circling around me like absolutely frenzied off their, out of their right, minds. Right, because you're home. Yeah. You feed them, you walk them, you, give, right. you throw the ball for them, you mm -hmm. give them attention. Yeah, you're like, you're the, you're it, you're the one. Yeah, yeah. There's no point in paying many, to attention to a lot of other people because you do it all for them. Mm -hmm. So I would ignore them. I would walk right in. I would pretend like they absolutely do not exist. I wouldn't talk to them. Mm. I wouldn't walk around them. I don't care if you step on their feet, they'll start to pay more attention to where you are yeah if you're stepping on them yeah and not and, and it's going to take a, it's going to take a while but in when you're just going to go about putting your stuff in the kitchen whatever you're doing la 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 no i, I do not have dogs the dogs are not in this house right now <laughs> mm -hmm. and then when they are calm and, and her whining has stopped you can calmly <laughs> yes you can calmly greet them mm -hmm. but it, once they're sitting or they're doing something. Just once something they're as, calm. That's, that's really all you calm. want is them to be yeah. calm. When you then I can in. sit down with them and. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, but you shouldn't do anything with them while they're in that frenzied mode because yeah. you are actually reinforcing it. Uh-huh. Now, the knee and the chest is, you know, something 25 years ago we did. And it, it might work for these two. But you have to. You have to hit them hard. Yeah. I don't hit. The, I just. So I just go like this. Like, get out. Right. Maybe so, I should just walk towards yes, them. Yes, okay. I would just walk towards them. Yeah. I mean, you could body. You can. You would be in essence body blocking them if they're right in front of you, and you're just going to keep going. You'll be body blocking. Mm -hmm. But just to sort of knee them is obviously. I mean, it's not helping. It's, it's just to move them out of the way. You yep, know. I would just walk right into them. Okay. You hear they, that? You hear that, girls? <laughs> especially Tessa. She's young enough that she should start to learn. Oh, this is Marcia's space. And this is my space, and I don't need to, like, she shouldn't be sort of invading your space. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, it took, when I first adopted my Boston Terrier, I've had her for 10 years, I guess. I can't tell you how many times I stepped on her because I refused to walk around her when she was in the kitchen or wherever she was. So if oh. I was moving around the kitchen cooking yeah. and she was under feet, I just kept going. Like, I didn't go around trying to step on her. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just went from point A to point B. And like she, she wasn't there. Correct. Oh. And over time... They learned to move out of your way. Yeah, she just like, oh, oh okay, you're coming this way. I'll get up and go over there. Uh -huh. You want them to defer to your space. Hmm. Hmm. And right now they're not. They're in your space. Right, they they're definitely like, are. Yes. And so if they're allowed to get into your space and they're allowed to get into my space and then everybody else that comes in, you know what I mean? It, it, mm -hmm. It's all very related. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on what they can and can't do. Yeah. Look, they're the best dogs in the world right I know. now. They are. <laughs> it's their nap time. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay. House training. She's four and a half months. She's four and a half months. Um, she doesn't fit into her crate anymore, but I have her tethered to like the edge, edge of the bed, mm -hmm. you know, at night, at night. Mm -hmm. And she has her own little bed and Sadie has her own little bed that we don't sleep with our dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, but she will get up in the middle of the night and sometimes she'll wake me up and sometimes she won't and she'll pee like right there. And she'll pee like randomly. She pee before, before we came, she peed here. So she's, and I'm home and I'm watching her and mm -hmm. I'm taking her out. I'm not taking her out every hour like I used to. Mm -hmm. um, but it just seems like, like, uh, I guess what, what's normal for four and a half months. I honestly can't remember with her. Mm -hmm. I just, it's right. 10 years ago. I don't remember. So should she be house trained? She should be at, close. Yep. She, she should, should be, be close. close. 
So you need to have more careful management. And there's a couple of options. So I would keep her on this leash and tied to something or with you all day. Yeah. And she usually is because I work. I work right. here. And I have her... Do you have an office upstairs or I something? I have on the third floor. Okay. And, you know, after our walk, we do a walk in the morning. Well, she well usually she's getting up at like four in the morning, which is like Whining exhausting. to go to the bathroom. Like, okay. Ah, and, she, and I take her outside. And, of course, she comes. And then it's like this big hoo-ha. You know, it's playtime, but mm -hmm. I try not to... Mm -hmm. And she comes back in, and I tether her back to the bed. And then at 6, she's up again. Mm -hmm. And then to Jim the will take her. Yeah, to go to the bathroom. Okay. So I take her back outside. And then I leave them down here mm -hmm. while I get another half hour of right. sleep. And Jim's so they're down, down here. here loose? N no, we block off okay. that right there. So they have the kitchen and the mudroom. Okay. That's it. And does she have accidents in that area? She will have accidents in the mudroom. OK. Do you but have a Jim's door in the mudroom to close? Uh, no. Okay. No. Um, Jim will usually watch her and then take her out again. It's almost like after she sleeps and when she wakes up, she's, she's peeing like constantly. Hmm. And, um, and then I'll take him for a long walk around 730, like 40 minutes mm -hmm. and they come back and then she'll sleep. She'll sleep. I'll bring her upstairs and she'll sleep till one o'clock. Okay. She's right underneath my feet. And then I take him for another little walk. But then there's like this time, like around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And maybe it's because I'm busy mm -hmm. or 5 o'clock when I'm making dinner. I'm not really paying attention mm -hmm. to her. She will sometimes pee. She, she's not on a schedule the way she is, you know, mm -hmm. three times a day. Like she'll pee or poop randomly. Mm -hmm. And is I she just having pee accidents or both? Um, mostly pee, okay. sometimes poop. Okay. Um, but she's getting better with the poop. Okay. Like she'll stand by the door and if I don't see her around me and I see her at the door, I know to take her out. Okay. So I would, um, we can take a look at it when we're done, but somehow maybe block off the mud room. And then do you have a gate you said you do put here, right here in the yes, kitchen? Yes, right here. Is that this one? That's yeah, I just move okay. it and then close that door. Okay. So... If dinner time is a time that you're distracted, then she should be tied in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. She just shouldn't have access, mm -hmm. full access. Mm -hmm. Because if she's having accidents, then she's not house trained and she doesn't have a signal. And tying her is going to help her develop a signal as yeah. opposed to crating. So if she's tied in your kitchen or tied here to the dining room, which, wherever, yeah. short. Like not this whole, you don't want uh, her to have this whole length right. of leash. Right. Because she'll just go to the end of it and potentially go to the bathroom. Yeah. That has to be very short. So that she can get up, walk around, you know, get more comfortable. She'll bark like crazy. Because she's not with you? Because she's tied up and everybody's doing other things. Well, then tie her with you. Oh, so she's with okay. you. She doesn't have to be, like, excommunicated. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, or tie her to you or something. But, yeah. But she just, the biggest mistake that people make is that they give the dog too much access. So she has not earned the ex to right to be in here. She's, right. she's already saying, oh, this is my bathroom area. She's going as far away from the kitchen, which is here in the mudroom, as she can. Yeah. And she's yeah. not messing in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. So she needs to have tighter restraint. So either close her off completely in the kitchen and so that you can keep your eye on her. And, and that might be enough of a small space where she won't want to mess in there. Mm -hmm. Time will tell. Dogs are hardwired to not want to eliminate where they have to eat or sleep. <laughs> well, she's peed on her on her bed. So that's kind of odd. Has she been checked for a urinary tract infection? No. And do you feel like she's dribbling or just like peeing a little bit, peeing a little bit more? Or is she's, she like going? She, she was going. Okay. Um, and is it possible that you missed a, that she was whining and you missed it? It may. I may have. Okay. I may have been sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Sleeping at night. Okay. Or is she quiet in a crate? Like if you've got the right size crate for her, would she be quiet? Um, at, at night? Mm -hmm. She might. You think I should put the crate in the room and put her in there? Yeah, if that's where she's... I mean, she's used to be sleeping in the bedroom. I, would, yeah. I wouldn't like move it somewhere. You're going to listen to her scream. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I would... I would try... I mean, you can either crate her or try to shorten up the leash to see if she'll stop having accidents. But she shouldn't have accidents if the leash is short enough, especially not in her bed. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. kind of odd. Yeah. Is it often? Um, I just cleaned it up this morning because I noticed it was wet. 
and it was almost like she pushed it away or well, something. Yeah. <laughs> Get like, this wet, smelly thing wanna... away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to sleep on that now. Right. Um, so, but yeah. Yeah. And I try to, like, uh, take the water away around 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, What's the, what time is the last time that she goes out at night? How late? Um, 8.30 to 9. Okay, so that's pretty early. It is. Really, yeah. Oh. Is there anybody up later than that? No. Yeah, I go to bed at 8. <laughs> <laughs> what about Jim? Is he up later than that? He, sometimes he is, yeah. So if he's, like, the last thing he should do before he comes upstairs to go to bed is put her out one more time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that means she stays down here with him or she goes upstairs with you and then he comes and gets her. Yeah, yeah. But so what's the latest? So if, let's say she went to the 8, uh, as late as possible. Yeah. 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, 3.30. 30. So she's going seven and a half hours if so she's that's, asking to go at 4 a.m. That's, uh, that's, a, that's long a long time, time for is. four and a half months. Okay, so yeah. maybe that's the problem. So I would, I mean, you can eliminate the water. It's just nothing I've ever done, but... And, but I would get her out, and if Emily's up, and if you could get her to get her out, she's probably yeah. up later now. Yeah, yeah, she is. So if she could take her out one more time yeah. to go to the bathroom, yeah. um, okay. it would be interesting to see whether you're going to get a little more length in the morning. Right. she'll stop asking to go out right. at four. Um, so that, so those, that's what I would do at night. Try to get her out later at night, um, possibly shorten the leash and or reintroduce the crate. Mm-hmm. So that mm -hmm. it shouldn't be huge. She should be able to just lie down and turn around in it. Because if it's too big, yeah. she'll go that she could potentially go to the bathroom in the crate. Oh, okay. I'll but, show you the crate. It's right. Okay. Yeah. But we really want to tap into that hard wiring that says, Don't go to the bathroom where I have to eat or sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's why the leash is nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So during dinner, if she is tethered back in here or or a limited space so she cannot get into the mudroom, what we really want her to do is to develop a signal that says, yo, I gotta go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. She needs to connect the feeling of, God, I gotta go to the bathroom, yeah. to, oh, the bathroom's outside. How do I get there? Uh -huh. <laughs> I need to bark at the door. I need to scratch at the door. Yeah. Right yeah. now she has no signal. Does Sadie she does, have a... Um, she stares at me. <laughs> Okay, that's a signal. <laughs> yep. And but she knows that she she doesn't have to go to the bathroom randomly the way she does. Right. Right. Um, she just goes three times a day, sometimes four. Now she's going tw twenty times. <laughs> right. But she's going <laughs> she's out with like her. She's tired. She's exhausted. <laughs> but she has started to whine. Like look at me and go. Good. Let's then label. Let's go outside or yeah. go potty or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. and then out you go. Mm -hmm. And do you take her out on a leash or do you take her out? Is she just free? No, I take her out on the leash. Sometimes okay. I let them, like for a quick pee, out mm -hmm. in the backyard, but the backyard isn't fenced, so okay. I have to watch. Yep. Um, you and could, then they do their thing and then they come back in. Okay. You could also treat her for eliminating outside. Like as soon as she finishes peeing or pooping, pop a treat in her mouth. Oh, okay. Don't yeah. let her finish you know, oh, way over there and then call her to you for the treat oh. because you've reinforced her coming to you, which is fine. Yeah. And not the elimination. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you want to reinforce her for eliminating outside, you need to follow her around. Then as soon as she finishes, just put one in her mouth. Good yeah. girl. I've been saying, good girl, good girl. Yep. She kind of looks at me waiting for me to right. say that yep. when she's... So, so then she'll get paid for going outside. She's not going to get paid for being for going inside. And you need to tighten up the management so she just doesn't have access to being able to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. inside. Okay. Yep. And as soon as she has a signal, like, you know, like I understand that Sadie doesn't really need a signal because prior to Tessa coming, you you had a routine of when she went out. Right. And she and that and that worked for her. And Tessa will get there at some point, but. 10 versus four and a half months is <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's different, you know so when are they house trained like when could you say okay they when she's well that's going to depend on you really for for you to tighten down your management mm -hmm. so she becomes house trained mm -hmm. because right now her accidents are because the management is too lax in certain areas mm. except for the upstairs tied thing that could be just that the leash is too long yeah um and in my opinion when she asks Mm -hmm. So when she will ask to go out consistently, and you've had, I'd say, a month of no accidents oh, at least. Uh -huh. Does that happen at like six months, or is it? It could happen now. I mean, she's not oh. too old to be house. She's not too young to be house trained. Oh, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's 
it's not going to happen at an at six months unless you do something to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people say, oh, well, I just thought that, you know, it would happen or when she was a year old that she'd be house trained. I said, well, not unless you did something to mm. help that process along. And is it like, okay, she, so she peed right here and I put the enzyme on it, but is natural, she going to... Natural, yeah. Um, yep. nature's miracle. Yeah, okay. I have a gallon of... Yep. <laughs> I've gone through two gallons. Yep. So I've sprayed it there. Now, is she... Is this a great rug or can you get rid of it? Um, I've had, it's a wool rug and, and she's peed on every rug, every rug she's so peed she, on. Right. So she has a surface preference of rugs. Yes. So she if does. you could roll them up and get them out of here. But she also pees on the floor too. But so preference, she, hmm? you think the preference is the rug or she um, doesn't care? I don't think she cares. Okay. She's done both. Well, it might be worth steam cleaning and nature's miracling again because I mean, if, you're, if your management gets tighter, it shouldn't be an issue, period. Yeah. If you get lax again, she's going to sniff around, oh, here's the bathroom, yeah. and go. Yeah. Because she has designated certain places as bathroom places. Right, right. right. Yeah. And that's by odor. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And the Nature's Miracle doesn't take care of it all? I, you know, it does, and I use it, but I, I don't think that it's... Like, I don't know how you can get it in the crevices here of the floors if she's gone on the floors. I know. Like, you know? I spray it and hope that it drips right. in there. Right. But, yeah, but their noses are so good. Right. Yeah. Right. So I would tighten up that management and start to track accident, no accident, or what time of day she's had the accidents, mm -hmm. which will tell you when she needs to have tighter management. Yeah. So it sounds like the yeah. daytime is great. You go for that big walk, yeah. then she's upstairs with you. It seems like the dinner time. Um, and not so much in the morning. When she's down here with Jim, she's been clean, too. Um, it depends if he's paying attention. Because now, like I said to him, you know, if she's by the door, she needs to go out. You have right. to watch her. You can't, right. you can't sit and read the newspaper right. or whatever. Right. You know. Or sit and read the newspaper, but she's on a leash. Or she's on a leash, yeah. Right. So if she gets up and moves, he knows. And then he goes, oh, do you need to go out or wait for her to bark? Mm -hmm. So the tethering mm -hmm. kind of forces her to, oh God, I gotta go, I gotta go, to whine, stare at you, bark, do something that, that yeah. then it's your responsibility to pick up on and say, oh, I think she needs to go out. Yeah, yeah. Yep. She's also had another little problem. Her, I mean, she she doesn't seem that way, but she she's afraid of certain things. Mm -hmm. Like when she sees somebody walking by, like, like she'll just ignore whoever walks by, mm -hmm. you know, unless she, thinks that she can jump on them. But if they're far away, <laughs> she's like, so what? Okay. But she sees somebody far away shoveling or doing something, she starts barking like crazy and she does. pulling. Yeah. Okay. Pulling on the leash and and I've gone up to people and said, "Okay, uh, I don't and I don't know if this is the right thing to do. I'll say, "Okay, let's say hello, Tessa." Mm -hmm. And so she's not afraid mm -hmm. like so does she UPS, go up and then be happy about it? Yeah, she's totally happy about it. Okay. So what makes you think she's afraid? Like her tail, like, I don't know. There's just, it's almost like a fear bark. Like, I'm not sure what's happening okay. or, okay. I, I don't know. It's So I think you, your idea is good if, if to let her walk up and see that it's, and then is she okay the next time she sees that? Like, is she okay with the UPS people now? No, she barked at the guy again. Like he was, he was carrying all these packages, and I guess he looks scary. Looks different. So yeah. when the picture looks different, she gets a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So you could also put some treats in your pocket, and anytime she sees anything weird, feed her. So mm. that strange picture equals Something high value. Good. Yeah, high value <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, like not milk bone and crunchy things, like hot dogs, chicken, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and or if she can go up and and see them and sniff them, and if you see her. Emotion change, like, oh, okay, now I know who you are. That's, yeah, that's yeah. great. We don't want her to continue to be afraid as she's approaching and sniffing them. Right, um, right. And you're not th quite through the socialization window, so I would I would continue to like, go into downtown Keene and yeah. just take her without Sadie. Oh, uh -huh. Just take her on her own so she can, she's going to need, she's going to need some time away from Sadie so she can be confident by herself because I I've noticed that that she 
that she looks to Sadie mm -hmm. for reassurance yep. that everything's okay. And Sadie's just oblivious and not right. really doing anything. And she has a nice sit, so you could walk and have her sit, and walk and mm -hmm. have her sit. It doesn't just mm -hmm. have to be a free-for-all, walk and have her lie down. She sees people, start feeding her for looking at them. She can go up and greet them. You can feed her some more. And it's it's just about that. That is classical conditioning. It's also called associative learning. Mm. So we we all learn that way. There are, and the negative associations are by far stronger in our memory than the positive associations because mm -hmm. I don't know what part of it is it our brain or our brainstem, but our survival instinct dictates that we remember the scary or the unpleasant things, so mm -hmm. we avoid them next time. It's mm -hmm. the same thing with her. Right. So she already has a somewhat negative association, for whatever reason, out of fear, when yeah. she sees these other weird pictures. So help her out by, and again, high value, chicken, cheese, roast beef. Take Sadie out of the picture. She's Before she even starts to bark, as soon as she like alerts, like, oh, what's that? Feed, 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 mm. feed. So you're mm -hmm. gonna use associative learning to your benefit mm -hmm. like don't let it sort of happen by itself it's always happening yeah, um, yeah but we want to sort of take control of that so that she can just be like oh ups guy what do you ha and look to you for something mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. okay okay and i would still get her out get her out get her out get her out as much as possible yeah. when does that window close Six months, oh. you know, some people may say it's already closed, but really? I've had puppies come to me at four and a half months that have been petrified of everything. And I, and I give them a boot camp, like every day we're out downtown, we're going through mm. one stop, we're going through Agway, we're going mm -hmm. through Petco, mm -hmm. we're on the trails, we're downtown, we're yeah. everywhere, anywhere, Hannaford's parking lot. If you're going to go shopping, take her for a trip around, then yep. do your shopping. But if you're already seeing some of that fear response, I would I would boot camp her and get her out as yeah. much as possible. Yeah, because I, know it's hard I took weather. her to one stop and she was freaking out in there, but she calmed down. Like the guy went to, um, no, it was Paul. It's not Paul's Pets. It's One Stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, the guy went to give her a treat, and for some reason she was so afraid of right, him. Right, right. So, so you gotta do that afraid. a lot. Yep. And then she saw the shopping cart and she freaked out. And then she saw a stuffed animal and she freaked out. She yep. was so it's all socialization. Yeah, she needs out. to go there yeah. constantly, like every day. Mm -hmm. Every day you should try to take her someplace. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Without I know it's the holidays Sadie. and yeah. I know it's like a busy yeah, time, but I yeah. wouldn't wait much longer or you're gonna end up with a fearful golden that we'll do another episode on <laughs> because she's, you know, because she's little now. <laughs> yeah. But the risk is that the fearful dog will become the biting dog oh, or the risk for right. biting. Because right. the fear, any, any animal has this choice. We have this choice, fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And a fearful dog that's fleeing is, that's okay, that's better because they're going to run away from the scary thing as opposed to the, the fearful dog that's choosing fight. Yeah. yeah. Because she has two choices, move the thing away from her or her move away from the thing. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to force her in those situations in One Stop or Petco or Agway, wherever you're going to go. Like I wouldn't, I would just have people not approach her and just, mm -hmm. you're just going to walk through, you're going to ask her to sit, you're going to feed her roast beef, you're going to walk, you're going to ask her to sit, you're going to keep her brain up here, ask her to lie down, reinforce her for that, and then go. Like it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. some long thing. Just right. walk through right, right. And, and then come back out. So that each, she needs to learn that the world is a safe place and the stuffed animals are okay. You can touch them. As she approaches them, you can feed her for it, but don't force her to do any of those mm -hmm. things because mm -hmm. she's forming those associations now all mm -hmm. the time that are going to mm -hmm. last her a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it's much harder to change them once they're already on the negative side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, um, a little, she's more fearful than she ever was. Yeah, yep. All right, any other questions? I think that's it. Good, all right. <laughs> so you got your work cut out with jumping, yep. house training. Mm -hmm. I don't know which of those are a priority for you. I think house training would be my priority, but. Yes. It's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd work, I would work with her individually, getting her confidence up and, um, you know, a class wouldn't be a bad idea for her because it would get her out and, and seeing other dogs mm -hmm. and other people mm -hmm. in somewhat of a controlled environment, um, as well as trying to get her out in those social social settings. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. All right. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I look forward to seeing you next week. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information.
Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years. 